How do I practice? Definitely one of the most asked questions of all time in competitive programming, just behind how do I become red? But if you've seen enough videos, you know that those two questions are basically the same thing. But even if you didn't ask either of those questions, you're still gonna get the answer to them. So I'm gonna start this advice off with a quote that I guess is quoting myself, because why not? I think it summarizes a key idea of what you should take away from problems. If you can't resolve a problem that you did before, you did not learn enough from it. Because the whole point of doing a problem is to figure out how to do it, right? So if you can't do it again, then you don't really know how to do it. And so, you know, so that's one thing. And overall, this video is going to have three big parts. Generally what to do before, during, and after practice. And also with some general tips scattered throughout. I also want to mention that a good chunk of this video is inspired by someone who I kind of mentored. And he showed me how well this stuff works by just doing it and gaining 600 rating in a year with it, which is kind of crazy. And I haven't been organized like this myself, but I have tried some of the things and they seem interesting to talk about. So yeah, let's get into it. First, let's talk about the problems you should practice on. In general, you probably want to select problems that are either difficult for you or designed to help you learn something, like for example, a topic. I do have a 90 second video on how I chose problems to practice for myself, and it worked out pretty well for me. So you can follow that if you want, or you can also put together a strategy that works well for you. To find stuff that's hard for you, take your rating or just the level that you can usually solve at, and just step it up a bit. You generally want problems that you aren't just going to mow down, so stuff that makes you actually think. To find topic-wise problems, well, there are a lot of resources. A good general collection of resources is usego.guides, so you can start with that one. I also myself do streams dedicated to exactly this, solving a lot of problems based on a specific topic called topic streams. So you can find those on my channel or in the description if you're interested. You can also like go to the CoForce's problem set and filter by tags. I'm sure other websites have some sort of functionality like that. And you also want to make sure that you've allocated enough time to really go at the problem. Because if you try for a short time, maybe you have to break to do something else, you go back to it, you have to break for something else, you keep doing that. It, it might work sometimes to have the problem running in the back of your head, but for the stuff I'm going to mention next, and like, in general, your thoughts are going to be scattered and it'll be hard to evaluate sort of your thinking process on that problem later on. Because the goal isn't just to solve the problems necessarily. It could also help to analyze what you're doing when you're trying to solve a problem, and if you're doing something badly, figure that out. But I will cover all of this shortly. So how long do you need exactly? And this depends on how long you think you should spend on a problem, of course, and I will cover that in the next section. So a common question is about how long you should spend trying a problem before checking the editorial or before like getting a hint or something, some external help. And honestly, people have different answers for this. I don't think there's any particular right answer, but essentially you're trying to strike a balance between how much you want to get out of a single problem and how many you want to do overall. I personally usually quit a problem when I feel like I don't have any more ideas and I've been stuck for a while, or when I just feel tired of it and don't want to try it anymore, which happens occasionally, and in which case you don't like the problem, maybe you just learn how to do it and move on. But for the other cases, how do you define a while, you may ask? And it's really a personal thing, but you probably want a specific number, so I will say 30 minutes since that's what I said in the other practice video. and. Just to make this absolutely clear what I'm trying to say, this should be 30 minutes of effort and 30 minutes of thinking where you're trying various ideas and approaching and finding that maybe none of them work. It's not 30 minutes after you started the problem, it's 30 minutes of being stuck. Some editorials are structured to have hints about the problem, and honestly this is great. You can use these hints religiously and take them one at a time and try and process them and solve the problem only with certain hints, and that's great. And most of the time though it won't, but you can sort of separate it into hints by doing stuff like only reading a sentence at a time, which is a method suggested by people like Erikto, Priyansh, and now myself too. So get a bit of, bit of information and then leave the editorial and spend some more time thinking. You don't have to spend a whole 30 minutes on each hint or sentence, maybe just a few minutes or so, but at least like give it a non-zero amount of time. Because it is worth it to think about the hints because you're getting the problem piece by piece. You should not get it all at once, the point is you understand how you would construct the solution for it. And once you do understand everything, code it for sure, because it helps to solidify the knowledge and you're also making sure you're getting all the details. And what if you don't understand it? Well, here's another quote for that. If something goes over your head, run after it. And what I mean is you shouldn't expect to understand everything on the first try, and you won't because it doesn't work like that for anyone. 
just give it some more thought and really put in the effort to understand it. And this, this goes not just for editorials, but really anything. You should treat stuff like topic tutorials the same way. Stuff is hard. It's going to take probably multiple rereads, and maybe you will have to ask people for help for it. Getting into that, if you are really stuck, and you have been for a while, even after looking at the editorial, then <clears throat> you can either save the problem for later when you know more, or you can ask someone for help. And there are many places you can do this. For example, Ericto's Discord server offers a couple channels for that. But I assert that this should be an absolute last resort, because at that point, you're passing your thinking off to someone else. And that's generally bad, because the, the best way to understand things is to sort of build your own idea of how it works. Now let's talk about metacognition, which is, in essence, it's thinking about your thinking, or in this case, thinking about your thinking process and what you're doing at every moment to try and approach a problem. So what I mean by this more specifically is when you're solving a problem, it can help to note down exactly what you're thinking about and when. And when you look back on these notes, you'll be able to figure out where you went wrong or what worked, and it's a lot easier than trying to reflect on it later when you don't necessarily know the whole process. And also, if you're doing some bad habit like being stuck in a single failing idea, doing this will also let you realize it while it's happening and cut it out right there and then. And a great way to do this is recording. You can hopefully see a lot of my thought process through my screencasts, and both you and I can map out exactly what I was thinking at very various times, hopefully, again. That may not always be the case. But also manually writing stuff out when practicing, it's going to work too. Now, once you're done with a problem, you should reflect on it. I recommend keeping some sort of spreadsheet that stores some information like, for example, the problem link and difficulty for easy reference, some sort of status on it, like if everything is totally clear, maybe you understand nothing about it or you're still working on it or something, possibly a summary of the solution or topics involved, um, if applicable, metacognition notes, just to have them there, maybe some takeaways from the problem, some like things you learned, and an overall analysis of what went well and what went badly. And that last part is super important, because when you're doing that, you're really looking into your process of thinking, and you'll probably be able to improve it. So for a different question, is it worth it to try resolving problems? As I mentioned before with that quote in the beginning. And honestly, it kind of de depends on how well you can pick stuff up from a problem. Like if you can learn everything instantly and then be done with it, then there's no reason to resolve it because you already know everything about it. But if you can't come up with your solution to it again, especially if it's something that heavily involves some topic, then you would benefit from at least knowing the solution again. Again, especially if it's at some certain well-known topic or common topic. In general, I think you should at least be able to recall the big ideas, but you don't necessarily need all the details like, for example, indexing and stuff like that. And if you can't do that, put the time into trying that problem again. Or at the very least, refresh yourself on the solution, read the editorial, understand it again, etc. And in general, you should treat every problem as a learning process. Because if you, smalled, if you solved it smoothly, then great. If you solve too many problems smoothly, step up the difficulty, because it seems like you're doing stuff that's too easy. And if it wasn't smooth, that's when you can note down your mistakes and you can work to prevent them in the future so you don't make those mistakes. You also don't need to like ask or look for what kind of topics you need to learn because your practice will tell you that. If you encounter something you don't know during your practice, it may be necessary to learn it if you see it often enough. And if you don't see a topic at all after you've done like a bunch of problems of a certain difficulty, then it's likely that you're not going to encounter that topic and you don't need it. Now, you will probably say that doing all this stuff will take extra time and maybe waste your time, and you're right that it will definitely take extra time. But if you let yourself get away with wasting problems and you're, you're not getting any information out of them, or not getting enough information, then the time you put into the problems will be wasted too, and then you're just left with no benefit. Now remember, I've seen this work firsthand. It's a little extra effort, but it can get you a lot of results if you do it well. I don't think you have to be mat as meticulous as I've talked about in this video and note down like absolutely everything and whatnot, but just following the process like roughly and doing some parts of it at least should be good enough. I also want to say if you have something else that works for you, just keep doing that. I mean, this is like a general thing, but you know yourself far better than I do. But also make sure it's actually working and that you're not lying to yourself. Evaluating your strategy is also something you could benefit from doing. And one final thing, if you didn't make it this far, you could consider liking and or commenting for engagement, so this video goes farther. And possibly subscribing is a good idea too. 
Apparently giving this reminder has been proven by experimentation on YouTube to like give huge results. So yeah, do that stuff. Awesome. Uh, that's it. Goodbye.